All right, you guys, I want to help you out a little bit with radioactivity. And remember, there's three different ways that radionucleotides, or unstable isotopes, uh, break down. First, we have alpha emission. Okay, alpha emission um, is when an unstable nucleus, you guys, we're just looking in the nucleus, and I'm drawing up a fake one here. Okay, this uh, element right here, beryllium, does not do this. But just to make your life easier, um, the, the nucleus is unstable, and it's going to actually shoot out an alpha particle. Okay, so an alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons. So out that shoots, and so that's no longer there. So what you're gonna have is a new parent, so this was my parent, it's now broken down to form daughter, um, something more stable, and what I'm gonna have is an element now that is two less on the periodic chart of the elements, so minus two on the periodic charts of the elements, and minus four atomic mass units, because remember, it's the number of protons that tells me what my element is. And so if I lost two protons, I'm now two protons less on the periodic chart of the elements. And both protons and neutrons have one atomic mass unit. So one, two, three, four. I've missed out or lost um, four atomic mass units. All right, beta emission. Um, I always use a sad analogy, you guys. It's, it's a divorce, okay? And I'm just gonna use that same generic. It's not correct, you know, but it just kind of makes your life easier. What I have here is a unhappy nucleus. And not going through alpha emission is gonna go through beta emission. This nucleus right here is unhappy. And so remember what a, um, this is actually a, a neutron. This neutron right here is unhappy. And um, what's gonna happen is, is a neutron is a fused electron and proton. So they're gonna get a divorce. So the proton's gonna stay, the electron's gonna go out, so we no longer have that neutron. Okay, well look at this, one, two, three, four, five. I am plus one on the periodic chart of the elements, but no change in mass. Because if you remember, um, we ignore the mass of an electron because it takes uh, 2,000 electrons to equal uh, one proton. All right, and then the last one is electron capture. Remember, you're gonna need to be able to name and briefly describe um, just one of these. All right, and this is a happier thing to end on. Here's my um, original little element that I'm drawing. And again, we've got an unhappy uh, nucleus. And in this case, this proton really wants to get married. Um, and to become stable, it needs to, we capture an, an electron um, and fuse it to form a neutron. And so look at this, I have one less proton, okay, but it's just an electron, so no change in mass. So hopefully that's not too hard. Now, some of the more complicated elements can go through a number of these steps, but you guys, that's a little bit past what we're doing here. Um, but these are the three different ways that um, radioactivity happens or that the breakdown can occur. All right, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was half-life, okay? And half-life is the time that it takes half the parent material to break down to form daughter. So we, you know, what do you radiometrically date? You really do radiometrically date a lot of igneous rocks. Those are our best rocks to radiometrically date because I know when they were born. They were born when they went from uh, magma or lava to solid, so when they cooled and solidified. And so at time zero, okay, you guys, I'm starting off at birthday, time zero, I would have, we're gonna look at the ratio of parent to daughter. So parent is the radioisotope and daughter is the stable element that it forms, okay, through that radioactive decay. At time zero, I'm gonna have 100% parent, zero, percent daughter. Now you guys, this is always going to add up to be 100, so we're going to be looking at the ratio of parent to daughter. So half-life is the time that it takes 50% of the parent to break down to form daughter. So after one half-life, it's 50-50. Okay? Now you guys, as long as you can divide this number by two, you're in good shape. Think about it. You have $50, you have to split it with your brother or something, 25%. Okay, after two half-lifes, you've got to just keep dividing that. And since it always has to add up to be 100, we know this is going to be 75%. Okay, divide it by two, there's another half-life, so three half-lifes, 87.5, because it adds up to be 100. Four half-lifes, what's that, 93.75. 
um, etc. So what I promise is I'll always, um, you know, give you guys whole numbers and not give you uh, decimals or fractions or whatever, and um, it'll make your life easier. Now, if you're in lab, you'll get a little bit more experience using it. Now, yeah, you guys, you're like, well, this is easy, right? And then I will always provide you, I'll say, okay, let's say you have 12.5% um, parent, okay, 87.5% daughter, and we're using carbon-14, and the half-life is 5,730 years. So that's what I will provide you with, the parent-to-daughter ratio, and the number of years for the specific radioisotope, number of years and a half-life for the specific radioisotope I'm demonstrating. And all you guys would have to do is make your little chart, figure out that, okay, three half-lives have passed, three half-lives times 5,730 years would give you how old that specimen is that you just dated. And that might be a piece of, you know, burnt wood or something like that. And you, maybe you just discovered a very old Viking boat. Okay, so um, it's pretty straightforward. This part up here works for any radioisotope. Okay, so if I'm doing uranium-238, heaven forbid, um, and we'd also, you know, in fact, we use uranium-238 um, to discover the age of the Earth. And what we had was 50% parent, 50% daughter, okay, and a half-life of 4.5 billion years old. Okay, how old is the Earth? Uh, one half-life? times that, oh, 4.5 billion years. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty simple and straightforward. And I'll always give you this stuff, okay? And all you have to do is know how to take $100, divide it by two, divide that by two, and so forth and so on, okay? Not too bad.